Hey there. Welcome to another video. Sorry the videos haven't been uh, forthcoming uh, too much lately, but I've been very busy. However, very busy can sometimes be a good thing. Because I uh, was contacted by a friend to help him clean out his lab. Actually, he's in the process of moving, just about done, and wanted me to uh, get the leftovers. <laughs> this is one of the leftovers, and it's pretty good. My friend is an electrical engineer type guy and lover of vintage e equipment, so that's a good thing. So what do I have here? It's a General Radio 1192B counter. Now, a frequency counter, and sharp eyes will notice Nixie tubes. Yes, Nixie tubes. And you guys know how much I like General Radio stuff, even though I haven't quite convinced myself that I collect it yet. Anyway, the 1192B is uh, a, a late 60s counter from General Radio. General Radio, of course, being an ancient, ancient, or they were, I should say, an ancient, ancient test equipment manufacturer that was the primo, primo stuff back, back in the day. Until, of course, Hewlett Packard stole their lunch. So, uh, <laughs> General Radio was very high quality stuff. Now, this is from the late 60s, kind of in the waning days of General Radio. Um, I believe this came out in 1969. At least that's, I think, where the manual uh, is, is uh, dated. Take a quick look at this thing. So, well, seven digits of Nixie's. Apparently you could get this in five and six digit versions, I guess, if you wanted to save a little bit of money. We've got a BNC input. We've got, uh, well, the power switch there. Let's turn that off. Uh, the coupling. A lot of the standard stuff that pretty much all frequency counters have. The trigger level, display hold, the uh, gate time here, basically the, the timing ranges. And we have some push buttons along here. We've got some attenuation here, some basic attenuation. You have a self-test for 100 kilohertz. Uh, obviously, you could do frequency or time interval, depending on which button you push here. Ratio AB. Now, this here, if you see it's input A, there's an input B on the back. And that allows you, this button allows you to do a ratio of the two counts. Count start and stop, if you want to manually do that. And reset. Of course, you have to... Well, it's a nice thing to have a reset on a counter. Um, the back. Let's take a look at the back. You can see this is not a very big unit. Well, we've got a big hole here. This is for a module that you could install if you wanted to connect this to automated test equipment or a mini computer or something like that. Basically, it's just a small board that would fit in there with a, a D-shell connector. And it would just buffer the data going to the Nixie tubes, buffer it out so you could, well, interface it to the rest of the world. And here's some more external, oh, this is the input B, some more external stuff, mostly, like I said, for um, automated test equipment. You stick this in a rack with a bunch of other stuff if you want to do some automated test on a gizmo. Uh, we have external time base if you want to use that. I should say that this is no HP. Um, this is clearly in the days when when general radio was waning, and while it's still a pretty high quality unit, it is no HP counter, and uh, um, the specs on this is not, are not very good. As it stands right now, it's only a 32 megahertz counter, which is pretty bad. You could get uh, another box about this size that sat next to it called the 1157 Scaler. And yeah, it was basically a prescaler, and that would get you up to 500 megahertz, which is a little more <laughs> respectable. Also, when we get inside, we'll show this, the time base in this is nothing special. In HP counters... The, the time bases are something special. They're extremely stable, high, high quality devices. And of course, in a frequency, frequency counter, yeah, the time base is the thing. That is the heart and soul of a counter. If you've got a good time base, you're pretty much going to have a good counter. 
If you've got a crummy time base, you're not going to have a good counter. So, yeah, so I don't know um, how these compared price-wise to uh, HP, but uh, I, I, this was probably still a fairly expensive unit. How many of these were made? I don't know. They're not very common. These, like I said, was, these were the waning days of general radio, so I don't think too many people purchased these. Um, the HP Nixie tube counters from the 60s and, and early 70s, you see those all over the place, don't you? These, uh, these general radio counters, not really. I've seen a few, but uh, no. They did actually have an earlier counter that was uh, a rack, rack mount item uh, that uses the edge-lit plexiglass displays. And one of these days I'll drag one of those out, because I do have one of those, unfortunately. It needs some work. Uh, but this one has Nixie goodness. And you know what? We're going to look at some Nixie goodness right now. Let's power this thing up. Oh, yes, you can see uh, they used a uh, fairly standard-looking thing, although it is weird to see a male sticking right off of a chassis there. They didn't use the three-prong thing, the pre-IEC Thing that HP used, which incidentally the trade name for those is 163. I don't know why, but it is. So you can use a standard extension cord on this. Oops, I bumped the stand. And we'll use our little Western Electric socket <laughs> again to prop it up. Get you in the center and kapow! We have Nixiness. And we have some stuck Nixies. You can see a couple of the uh, 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 positions are showing two digits. Well, you know, that's what the reset button is for. Okay, we're down to zero. Uh, okay, let's see what happens if we uh, run the self-test there. Well, okay, good. We it, it is counting. It's doing the 100 kilohertz test, and sure enough, look at that. It seems to be pretty well calibrated, despite what I said about the, uh, uh, the kind of cheesy time base. Um, so ooh, we've got Nixie goodness. Let's just have some fun here. I'm not at my workbench, so we are going to, uh, just, uh, stick a screwdriver in the BNC input. And how about that? We've got numbers. You can see, uh, some of the Nixies might be getting a little tired, um, because the digits are not completely lighting up. Oh, well. What, what do you expect for a, a machine that is, well, it's almost, it's 40 some odd years old, almost 50 years old, perhaps. But yeah, it's looking like we're working, you know, as, as much as my uh, calibrated signal generator here <laughs> is showing. Um, but yeah, we, we, uh, we have numbers, we have numbers. All right, so let's take a look inside. Plug it. Oh, these tags on top. One nice thing that my friend uh, does is when he fixes things, he does tag everything. So you can see he did a he uh, tags things for what he did. And this thing on top is apparently a tag from well, 1992, from when this thing was actually being used. Apparently, had a problem in the ratio circuit. Uh, so the tags that he affixed to his test test equipment is all very all very handy. Oh, yeah, and uh, being general radio, they use the goofy general radio screws. Why? Who knows? There was a fair amount of not invented here at general radio. That was one of their problems. But, yeah, easy to get out of the case. Pretty nice aluminum case. Here we have it. The innards. We can see circuit boards. My God, General Radio is using circuit boards. None of this point-to-point -point wiring. Yeah, they were finally getting into the modern manufacturing of the, of, of the 20th century. Uh, we've got, I see some DTL. I see some uh, early TTL. Oh, it looks like 1971. There's a 1972 date code. Um... That's a bit more of a modern chip, although I did notice on his little uh, tag thing, which, here it is. He did mention that, yeah, he had to replace IC6 with a socket, and sure enough, that's where it is. 
Um, so pretty nice construction. I don't know what that chip is. RF3202. I think it's RF. Yeah. I'll have to look in the manual. The manual is available online from IET. IET is the company that I think bought uh, a lot of General Radio's assets. Now, I think this is the time base. And you can see, yeah, it's a crystal. It even says GR Company on it. Um, yeah, it's kind of cheesy, isn't it? There's no oven happening there. It's just a crystal and weird long leads there, which is mostly is not a good thing to do with crystals. But I guess they wanted to clip it onto the case for thermal stability, I guess. I don't know. Um, but yeah, we can see the analog bits here. Reasonably nicely done. But like I said, it's no HP. The underside has the board with a lot more of the analog bits, although there you can see there's a lot of real estate that's not really used for much. This is all the switches here. Uh, okay, I see this. Yes, this is where it's been repaired by my friend. And yes, those need to be clipped off. Why he used a wire wrap socket, I don't know. Maybe that's all he had. But yes, the long pins there are making the former quality inspector in me uh, scream a little bit inside. <laughs> so, uh, oh, looks like we had another little repair here sometime over its life. Might be on the tag, off the look. Nice aluminum metal case. I mean, it's still very nicely made. There's no doubt about that. It's, it's a high quality unit. But, hey, it's one of those things that just wasn't good enough to uh, save General Radio. And unfortunately, General Radio kind of sputtered out in the, what, the early 80s? They, at the end, they were mostly a automated test equipment manufacturers, things like IC testers, chip testers. They were per bought out a um, couple pieces. They were actually parted out, I think. Uh, one, one part went to uh, Teradyne, maybe? And the other one went to I, uh, IET, which I think still makes a decade resistances. <laughs> things from way back um but yeah general radio it's now no longer it's good stuff though and i like it and i'm very pleased that, that i got this out of uh out of my friend there um we'll see what other types of general rad stuff he's got because you know i like it anyway if you like this video leave a like maybe share it around to all your uh, nixie tube friends and hey, subscribe, because I'll have more videos on interesting bits and pieces from my collection. Maybe go watch uh, some of my back videos. You'll see some of that stuff. All right. I got to get back to work. I'm still very busy. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.